Hello everyone. Like I said before, my name is Alexandra Flores Colti. I'm a chair of the Oregon Student Association Executive Committee, and it is my utmost pleasure tonight to welcome Nalini Stan, the current Director of Strategic Partnerships and Youth Engagement for the Working Families, Working Families Organization. <laughs> She has been a leader in advancing advocacy work around student debt and mass incarceration. Nalini bolsters the main tenet of advocacy work, the ability to keep the dream alive of direct action organizing. In the time that I've known Nalini, one of the things that I have appreciated the most has been her sincerity. With someone who is so well known and respected in the student movement, the undocumented movement, the LGBTQ movement, the environmental justice movement, and the racial justice movement, it would be easy for a person of lesser character to fall into the trap of celebrity activism, to make their, what they do and their work about their own name and celebrity. However, Nalini has never been anything but genuine and often is uncredited for the immense work she does behind the scenes. That despite her well-known name, Nalini does not do this work to get noticed. She does it to fight for the communities she comes from and those she's an ally to. It is because of this that I am so, so, sorry, this is a little worded awkwardly. I'm so proud to welcome Nalini Stamp, and I welcome, invite you all to welcome with the warmest wishes Nalini to the Northwest Student Leadership Conference 2014 keynote address. Um, I'm sure. Before I start this, um, with a little song that I learned from Karan Blair, who is a trainer at the Midwest Academy. Woo, woo. Um, so if you would repeat after me, and you can start clapping. Solid as a rock. Solid as a rock. Rooted as a tree. Rooted as a tree. I am here. I'm here. Standing strong. Standing strong. In my rightful place. In my rightful Come on again. Solid as a rock. Solid as a rock. Rooted as a tree, rooted as a tree. I am here, I am here. standing strong, standing strong. In, my in my rightful place. Woo hoo! All right, y'all got soul. Y'all got soul. <laughs> um, thank you to the Oregon Student Association for inviting me here today. It is amazing to see so many young people and faces in a room together, determined to fight for justice. I want to start by sharing my personal story and a little bit about why I fight. Um, as Alexandra said, my name is Nalini Stamp, and I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. Ooh. What, what? Yeah, thanks. Uh, with a large working class Puerto Rican family. My grandfather owned a bodega. My mom was a single mother looking, working at a local cable company. We shared everything, meals, family time, houses, and quality time. I grew up a theater kid, as if you can't tell from before, dance, show choir, you name it. Um, I have the honor and privilege to go to the most prestigious performing high, arts high school in the country, LaGuardia High School. My senior, there, my senior year there, as I was applying to conservatories, my mother and I were applying for financial aid and we realized that the federal government wouldn't give us enough aid, if any, because of her same-sex partner. Then I began to lose hope in my future. So much hope um, that I dropped out of high school, got my GED, so I could work and try to save enough money to attend college. A few years later, in 2008, I got into film school, but my mother was facing bankruptcy. There was no one in my family who could co-sign my student loans for being underwater in their mortgage. I wasn't sure there was any way that I would be able to pursue a higher education. As I said, the year was 2008, the economy was in a free-for-all, and a guy by the name of Barack Obama was campaigning on a message of hope and change. I thought to myself, what was a girl from Brooklyn to do? I knew I wanted to do my part to elect people who would fight for opportunities that were not afforded for me. So people like me, who were just as determined and just as smart, but didn't have the resources, could pursue higher education. That fall, I started knocking on doors at the Working Families Party in New York, working to elect progressive candidates to office and building grassroots power to support issues like taxing the rich to fund education and ending the influence of big money in politics. Nationally, there was a different conversation happening. 
The rise of the Tea Party shifted the country to a radical conservative framework. I started meeting my peers who were like me, were inspired by the hope and change that Obama's campaign was campaigning on, but were tired of playing defense. Tired of talking about fundamental cuts to programs like Social Security. Tired of being drowned in student debt interest rates. And tired of the 1% holding most of the wealth in this country. Yeah. It was our time to play offense. Which is why I responded to the call to take direct action and occupy Wall Street. Actually, when we saw that video of my first arrest, which was the Brooklyn Bridge, was up there. It was the first time I personally discovered people putting their bodies on the line, and myself, putting bodies on the line to highlight the injustices that were happening to our communities in this country. During those months of intense action and leadership, a mentor of mine by the name of John Kest, mm, may you rest in power, said, Malini, slow down. This is a marathon, not a sprint. Today I'm here to ask you, will you walk that marathon with me? Our generation is the first generation that may not do economically as well as the generation before us. We are drowning in student loan debt and fighting tuition increases. We are facing historical levels of unemployment. When we can find jobs, they're at a minimum wage, which is a far cry from the living wages we deserve. Rather than building schools and invest, investing in higher education, we are locking up our communities, my communities, in private prisons. Right. We know this is wrong, we know this is unjust, and we know that another world is possible. The reality is higher education is a public good and should be free. Prison should not be privatized and no one should go to prison for victimless crimes. Working full time should be making wages that can support healthy families. And no one in this country should live without basic rights, no matter your ability, citizenship, race, sexual orientation, and identity. It is our time to put these bold demands in the public consciousness and play offense. This last weekend, ooh, I'm emotional this tonight, a young black life was not again recognized in the verdict of the Michael Dunn trial. Dunn was convicted of attempted murder, but not convicted of the crime that he committed, which was murdering the young Jordan Davis, who last week would have had his 19th birthday. In the, in the face of these enormous injustices and at times seemingly impossible challenges, there is an amazing opportunity on a scale that we have never seen before. The greatest movements in history started and began with young people at the forefront. I've had the honor and privilege to see firsthand the power of my peers standing up and fighting for their future. As I look out into this room, and the potential brewing, especially the young people of color, I'm reminded of my comrades at the Dream Defenders in Florida, who I spent six months with in 2012, who could no longer stand idly by and watch a process move forward without taking a stand for what they believe in. By physically occupying the governor's office and forcing the conversation there, they, young people, came up with their own legislation called Trayvon's Law to investigate the school to prison pipeline that they saw in their communities and their day-to-day -day lives. But no matter what community you come from or what side of the country you're on, students and young people have enormous power. We are standing up for our futures and fighting for those who don't have a voice. From the Gulf Coast to the Pacific Northwest, there's something brewing in this country. And the time has never been more right for us to take our stand make our voices heard, and fight for our future we know is possible. Right here in Oregon, in a classroom here at Portland State University, students and professors were unwilling to stand by as they watched the mounting student debt crisis bury the future of students and families. Standing up and fighting for our future can and should take many ways. These Portland State students, under the guidance of their visionary professor, and a personal hero of mine, Ms. Barbara Dudley, happy birthday, Woo. began to look into a way that Oregon was funding higher education, as well as the mounting national crisis. And they knew that Oregon was in a moment of crisis and needed to go on the offense. They knew that a bold plan and an attempt at a solution was possible that could advance a powerful vision, debt-free higher education. With support from Oregon working families and our own Sammy Alloy, 
the students and professors, the folks the most affected by the crisis at hand looked at options across the country and found pay it forward. But they knew they had to make it right for Oregon, which in 2010 cut financial aid by 75%. And if so, in partnership with working families, students lobbied their legislators and representatives. And on the same exact day that Congress failed to act by letting student loan interest rates double, Oregon took a stand because young people were at the forefront by unanimously passing a study bill for a pilot program around Pay It Forward, which is just the first step. We need to implement Pay It Forward, but we also need more commitment from the state and federal government to make public higher education a priority and increase investment in public community colleges and universities. Young people's voices were heard, and they were heard at the local level moving the ball forward and not playing defense. They organized, they lobbied, and they brought their agenda and their issues into the State House, which sparked proposals in 19 other states. And we need to keep doing that. Senator Jeff Merkley, who you'll hear from tomorrow, support and action by sponsoring a federal Pay It Forward bill shows the type of action we need. Our fight, though, is not a new fight. This summer marks the 50th anniversary of Freedom Summer, when thousands of Northern College students took a trip down to Mississippi to register voters, conduct freedom schools, and fight the Mississippi Democratic Party in the era of Jim Crow. Freedom Summer was a pivotal moment in the era of civil rights, and it began with, started by, all in all, young people. I have the honor and privilege to be planning Freedom Summer 2014 this year to address the issues of young people of color's lives today, because our lives matter. Criminalization, jobs, democracy, and education are important, and we need to address those issues head on. We know that the time is now for our communities to demand what we deserve, to demand these basic rights, to fight offensively. Two weeks ago, we gathered in Raleigh, North Carolina at Shaw University, the birthplace of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee to participate in the 8th Annual Historic Thousands on Jones Street Moral March, part of the Moral Mondays movement. Forward together, not one step back. Watching young people from across the country come together, chanting, we ready, we coming, gives me so much hope for our generation's future and turn in the fight for justice. And we are ready. We are ready to put our bodies on the line. Are you? Working families, we understand that young people are the foundation of making this work possible. I'm here today because Working Families fundamentally believes and is committed to supporting and working with young people to fight for our future. And that starts with going on the offense and demanding what we deserve. We deserve free higher education. We deserve an education that serves everyone and sends nobody's families to jail. Because our lives matter, period. But nothing on the table right now is about that. We might get a tuition freeze here and there, which is great, or a senior or ground law put on pause here and there, but we deserve so much more. You deserve so much more, because we're people. So I'm here today to ask, are you ready to start playing offense? Huh? Are you ready to start playing offense? Yeah. Are you ready to start playing offense? Yeah. So stand if you're willing and able to fight for a better future. Stand if you're tired of being sick and tired. Stand if you will fight for free higher education. We are committed to doing this, and I hope you are too. And I believe that we will win. I believe, you know, repeat. And then I believe that we will 
everybody needs to get raggedy, get ratchet, get whatever you want to do, and go crazy. I don't care if you got to jump on the stage with me, whatever you want to do, but go crazy. Y'all hear me? Y'all hear me? So I, I, I believe, I believe, I believe that we, I believe that we, I believe that we will, I believe that we will. Yeah.